Hello everyone and welcome to the first extension video of the month and a month full of extension videos, the next step up from scripting. In this quick tip tutorial, I'm going to show you useful CS interface methods, which are methods that are unique to extensions that allow you to access things like the name of the extension, going into scripts, getting the application ID, and many more useful functions. And just a reminder that if you guys happen to use the Brave browser and have any basic attention token, you may now donate as my channel has been verified to receive the tokens this is just a way to donate if you don't have actual money and you can go ahead and go to any of my videos or my channel page and donate if you want so let's go ahead and get into the tutorial I'm gonna be using a classic extension testing extension that I built a while ago the link to that will be in the description there's also a couple of other videos I've used it in um, but you can download the extension and put it inside of your extensions folder wherever that may be on Windows it's under program files common files Adobe CEP extensions and we have it right here called extension testing where we have our HTML our JSX our JS our fonts our CSXS manifest file and our CSS files uh, the only resources we're really going to need today is going to be in the JavaScript folder we're going to have our main.js open where um, we're going to initiate a function uh, whenever we click on a button we're going to need the csinterface.js library to reference any other functions or methods you may want. And also you'll want to make sure you have your index.html open um, so that you can go ahead and add the on click to the button. So inside of this extension, if you don't know how to launch it, go to window extensions, uh, extension testing. And what you want to do is uh, you have this button called click on me. And if we look at the HTML here, we have the button right here. And when we have the attribute on click, it's going to go into the function called button click. So if we go into our JavaScript file, we have the button click function. And when we click on the button, it should send us an alert message saying you click the button. And as you can see, we're successfully getting that alert message. The reason for this is we need something to actuate these CS interface methods. So inside of here, we're going to be going over all of these methods right here. Now, I'm not gonna be going over every single method that's within the CS interface guide because there are a ton and there's lots of comments and stuff left by the Adobe or whoever developed it crew. And we're just gonna be going over the most useful ones that I've used most often. And let's go ahead and get started doing that. So the first thing we need to do is create a new CS interface object. The way we do that is just by creating a variable with whatever name we want. We can call it interface, we can call it anything we want really. And we're gonna set that equal to a new CS interface and that's capital CS interface and then you're going to make sure you want uh, these parentheses here because you're creating a new CS interface object which will basically allow you to interface with the extension itself now I have this list of things here which says CS interface dot method dot method dot method and all we need to do is copy the method name because CS interface is just referencing that you need a CS interface object but in our case uh, we actually just called it interface so what we can do is say interface and then paste in that code dot close extension. As you might imagine, this should close our extension when we click on the button. So I'll save and I'll close out the extension and relaunch it. And every time we change the code, we'll need to save and relaunch the extension to test. But now if we click on the button, the extension is going to close. I can go ahead and check in here and there's no extension and check in here, the extension is closed. The next one is going to be eval script. This is a very commonly used one to go into your JavaScript extended file or your JSX file and run a function. So in this case, I have a function in my JSX called test and all it's gonna do is alert uh, test. So if I go ahead and call eval script and inside single quotes, put in the name of my JavaScript function, it's gonna go ahead and go in and alert test hopefully. So we'll go ahead and run our extension again, click on the button and now we're gonna get a script alert saying test. Now the rest of these are strings and other information that's going to be returned. So we're gonna to want to alert them so that we know we're getting that value. So I'm gonna enclose everything in an alert. So the next one is get application ID, which is going to give us the application ID of where the extension is being loaded. In our case, we're just launching this in After Effects. So we're gonna get the ID for whatever After Effects is. So when we click on it, we get AEFT. And if we were to run this in a different app, we would get something different. One thing I do want to note is that if you're ever confused about uh, if it takes an argument or maybe you're not getting the value back you think, all you have to do is say copy the method name and go into the csinterface.js file. And when we go ahead and look at it, uh, we can find the actual prototype function 
which in this case for a valve script, it wants a script and, and or a callback. Uh, if we look at say get system path, it requires a path type, and this will allow you to go in and actually see what is required if you're having some issues. But most of them don't require um, that complex of arguments or no arguments at all. So the next one we're gonna go over is get extensions. This is gonna get us a whole list of all of the extensions. So what we're gonna do is just uh, create a variable called extension list and set that equal to our interface.getExtensions. And then if I alert the extension list, we should get a whole list of all the extensions we have installed. So if I save it and run it, you can see we get a whole list of objects. Uh, what I could do is maybe grab the first one. And you can see we're getting an object. And then from further after that, we have this object. We could maybe go in and check all the properties. So let's go ahead and say, uh, extension is equal to the first extension and then we should just be able to do a for loop and something like this where we loop through the extension and let's alert i each time and see what we get so the first time we're going to get the main path then the id then the name the width the window type and all of these properties that are within our extension so you can go through and even just look at all the extensions and all of their properties the next one is called get OS information, which is very useful if you're not sure what OS the user is running on. This can be useful for things like different folder structures and different methods that are required. Um, so if we go and run the extension, we're going to get Windows 7 64-bit. And yes, that's true. I am a dinosaur. I refuse to upgrade, but I'll have to eventually. Um, but you'll get this very specific information about it. And then you could use that information to uh, do whatever you need to do on their OS. The next one I use all the time to link to things, uh, it's the open URL and default browser. Typically in scripting, it requires quite a bit of code and checking to get this to work. Uh, but luckily with extensions, we just have a single method where we just put in the website string as the argument. So if I go ahead and put it in as my YouTube page, it's gonna launch the default browser on the user's computer and launch that page. The next method is get extension ID. You can see what the IDs are inside of the manifest of any extension, the XML file included inside the CSXS folder. And this uh, ID will be something like com dot, uh, the name of the extension, and maybe it will include other things. So if we go ahead and alert what the extension ID is, click on our button, we're gonna get com.extension.testing.panel. The next method is called is window visible. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's gonna tell us if the extension window is visible. The reason you'd want to use something like this, which gives us true, because it is visible, is if you wanted to say check if a secondary extension was open, and if you need it to be open, go ahead and open it up. And actually, I didn't really go over it, but there is a method called request open extension. And if we go and say interface.request open extension, we need to provide it with the ID of any extension. So I could say copy an extension ID, paste it in there. And when I click on the button, it's going to launch whatever the extension is. So this is a great way to launch secondary uh, versions of your extension or in other extensions entirely. And the last one we're going to go over is called get window title. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's going to give us the title that is in the uh, dockable part of the extension. So if I go ahead and click on it, you can see it's going to give me extension testing, which is the title of our extension. So that's going to actually do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Those are a few of the very useful CS interface methods. You can get a whole list of them inside of any of the CS interface.js files that are included with your extension. And all of this will be very helpful in making your lives a lot easier, making you code less, and getting to the point of your extension a lot quicker. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to hit subscribe down below as well as the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly. This month again is all about extensions. That next step up from scripting is a little bit more complicated and the full tutorials are going to be pretty long and very informative this month. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them in the comment section down below. I'm always open to answering your questions as well as receiving feedback and ideas for future tutorials. And of course, the code uh, will be in the GitHub link in the description as well. And down there as well, you can follow us on Instagram and get updates on behind the scenes things and when tutorials are live. But that's going to do it, guys. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next one.